Okay, so for a long time now, SD cards have been one of the main storage on Raspberry Pi. But uh, with the Raspberry Pi 5, we got NVMe, which is definitely faster storage and more reliable as well. But I still use and still buy SD cards because they're really cheap for what they are and the performance is still reasonable. These Maker Discs were the first ones that I had, which actually had the operating system Raspberry Pi OS installed onto them. But we've got a new one now. And from this article, it looks like they've been working really hard on improving performance with SD cards. So today we're happy to announce a couple of new accessories that we think will make a big difference to your experience with Raspberry Pi. With the latest release of Raspberry Pi OS, Raspberry Pi 5 can make use of the extra performance available from Class A2 SD cards. To help you take advantage of this, we're introducing our own range of high quality, low cost Raspberry Pi SD cards. And we've also released a Raspberry Pi bumper as well. So I went ahead and ordered one from Pi Hut and I paid, uh, so it's £9.90 and then £3.90 shipping. Obviously if you buy more items to make up an order you probably get free shipping. And here it is in this plastic bag. But I also ordered a, another A2 SD card, this is a 64 gig from Amazon and uh, I paid £5.83 for this one. But it does make some big claims, uh, read up to 100 megabit per second. Uh, it does say it's A2 rated, it said it's waterproof, shockproof, x-ray proof and temperature resistant. So the official Raspberry Pi SD card is in the slot. Uh, I'm going to leave the NVMe drive on there because I've got it that it defaults to SD card, which is what they default to anyway. So let's shut that down and see what happens on first boot. So let's switch on. So it's starting to boot. It does say 32 bit there, that can't be right surely. Definitely says Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit. I wonder why they've done that. Is that for compatibility maybe with older Pis? Right, let's just accept all the normal bits on here. Don't need Raspberry Pi Connect for this bit. And let's update the software. And I've just been reading on Pi Hut's site, only the most current stable release of Raspberry Pi OS will be used. We install a 32-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS on these cards for compatibility with all Raspberry Pi models. And it does say, while some models such as the Raspberry Pi 4 and 5 can make use of and benefit from a 64-bit system, we sell these cards with a 32-bit OS for full compatibility across the range of boards available. It still works perfectly on all models, however you may want to rewrite a 64-bit OS for full performance and features on Raspberry Pi 4 and 5. And I've done quite a few tests in the past on 64-bit versus 32-bit, and even on the Raspberry Pi 4, it actually made a big difference. Performance was better. So I'm going to do the test on a 32-bit, but I'm also going to do it on 64-bit as well. And I have done a lot of testing on SD cards in the past, so this was the most I've tested, so 17 SD cards. And my favourite was generally the Kingston Canvas Go was the one I tended to favour for overall results. But obviously now the software is working differently with SD cards, so we should get better performance even on those cards that I tested before. So let's close this down so there's nothing else running and we'll launch Diagnostics. So if I press the Windows key and start typing Diagnostics and enter, this is our speed test. So we can run the test. I do it three times and take the best random read speed. Okay, it seemed to take a while, uh, but I am used to NVMe drives now, which are incredibly fast in comparison. So let's do show log and we can see that obviously it passes. So the pass would be 10,000, we got 33,000. The uh, random write speed would be 500, we got three times that. And we got 1,500, nearly three times that on the random read speed. So I copy these. And then if I open up Gini, let's just paste it into that. And let's label that as it is. Again, I'm gonna do it three times and take the best from those three. So that might not be the final one that stays in there. So I reset and run again. Okay, so that's the third test and the fastest random read speed. So 4,059, 4,220, 4,119. All pretty consistent scores, but the first one was the fastest one. So I need to save that. And now I need to write a fresh copy of Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit on this Axe SD card. So I'm going to have to put it into a reader to do this. And this is the thing, so if you want 64-bit and you've got this uh, SD card, you're going to have to have another SD card and an SD reader to be able to do it. So let's pop that into the USB 3 socket so it's faster. 
And that's assuming that you haven't got another computer to do this. If a Raspberry Pi is your only device, uh, then that's what you would need. Otherwise, if you've got a Windows computer, a Mac, another Linux computer, uh, then you can use that device with Raspberry Pi Imager to write to the SD card. But let's hit Windows and type in Imager, and I can do choose device, Raspberry Pi 5, choose OS. So Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit, choose storage. And I'm looking for 64 gigs, so it's this one here, and hit next no customization because that's the same as the other card and yes I put my password in and come out when that's all done and that's all finished writing to the axe sd card in the reader but you could have done this with just an ordinary usb stick so basically put the usb stick in write it to the usb stick and run the os from that on either a pi 4 or a pi 5 and then you could write the image back to the original raspberry pi sd card but let's shut this down and i need to reboot it with the axe so that's off, let's take that one out and I'm gonna replace the card that's in there with this one. Okay, so after the first test on the Axe, uh, it's actually beaten the official Raspberry Pi card on everything. So sequential write speed 33,000 compared to 44,000, random write speed 2000 versus 1500, and random read speed very similar at 4269 and 4220. But I'll do the three tests, so run again. I was really expecting the Axe to be bad because it's so cheap and also all the claims about x-ray shockproof and waterproof. So let's show this second one. Hey, it's still consistent. So again, we're looking for fastest random read speed. So 4269, 4270, 4254. So it's 4270. And did it drop in anything else? No, no, everything's pretty consistent. Again, these aren't longevity tests. Uh, this is more just a speed test on a newly written card, but that's impressive speeds. Now I've saved those results. And I'm going to use the Axe to write 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS to the official Raspberry Pi SD card. Choose device, Raspberry Pi 5, choose OS, 64-bit. So I'm now writing 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS to the 32-gig Raspberry Pi official card. Okay, so that's three tests with the official card on 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS. Let's find the fastest random read speed, 4276. So that's actually the fastest speed so far, random read speed. So sequential, I never think is as important for an OS. Random write speed is still faster on the Axe. And now I've saved this. I need to write 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS to the Axe now. So 64 gigabytes. And yes. So looking good after two tests, let's do the third test, reset and run test. Okay, let's have a look. And let's copy that in with the other results. Let's have a look at the fastest random read speed. Last result, look, 4375. So 4219, 4217, then 4375. So let's delete these two. And if we have a look at all the results together, so the Axe definitely won on the 32-bit operating system, and it also won on the 64-bit. I was really not expecting this very cheap card to be fast. So I'll put those results in the description if you want to have a look at them more. And we can compare them to some of the previous speed tests on other SD cards I've done. This is the fastest card I've tried, which is the Samsung Pro Plus. So the fastest write speed, yeah, so that's the fastest as well still on the Samsung. And then random read speed was amazing, 6,700, 6,800. And this is before this patch, so before this extra compatibility. So that Pro is gonna be really good with the latest operating system on it. Okay, so let's go back over this post and uh, sort of skim over some of the changes. So to ensure we have the best possible experience at the lowest possible cost, we've worked with our partner LongSys to develop a range of branded Raspberry Pi SD cards. These Class A2 cards offer exceptional random read and write throughput across the entire range of Raspberry Pi computers. And when used with the Raspberry Pi 5, support command queuing for even higher performance. It talks about doing an update. I am already up to date, uh, although this would say I'm not, but it's only a, another couple of updates that aren't there. And it talks about being similar to an eMMC and much faster performance. Uh, I won't go through all of it because there's loads of details and if you want to know all about it, you can read through it. There's a testing thread in the forums as well. If your card supports CQ, then you should see this line appear in dmessage. So if I open up terminal and I type in dmessage, you get this and uh, 
there's loads and loads of information and I couldn't find it in there, but I can narrow this down a bit. So we can do this one, so it's only looking for MMC. Because I thought you'd be able to do Control F and have a look in the page, but you can't. But if you paste this in, there you go. So that only shows you the things that have MMC in them. And the bit we're looking for isn't there. So we're looking for Command Q Engine Enabled. And this is the official card, and I've got an upstate operating system. And we can even go a bit further as well. Uh, so this is all from this thread. So if I do this one, then it's looking specifically just for Command Q Engine. And as you can see, it doesn't do anything. So it's not there. Uh, now I'm gonna run an update uh, as it says in here. And it won't take very long because there's not very much to update. So yes. And I'm gonna reboot just in case, although a lot of the time people say you don't need to reboot with Linux, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And if we open the terminal again, and we'll do that same search, and as you can see, nothing happens. But I did find in the forums, Friday, October the 11th, read the updates in the first post of the thread, CQE is currently disabled due to an interaction between flushing and other in-out operations, potentially causing a controller hang. If you still want to experiment, add dtparam to config.txt. So I need to type this in, sudo nano boot firmware config.txt and we're adding that command in. So we can just go down here and let's paste that in and control X, yes, and enter. So now let's reboot again. So let's open a terminal again and run that command and command Q engine enabled. So that's the message we wanted to see. So let's run a diagnostics test and show log. So is that, oh, random read speed, look. Whoa, that's way better. CQE enabled. Random read speed, which I always think is the most important one. That's the fastest test we've had so far. This is really good. Uh, so sequential write is the same pretty much. Uh, random write speed is faster as well. Yeah, faster than the axe on it. So, so here we've surpassed the axe now for the first time. Can I enable that feature on the axe and get the axe to be even faster? Oh, actually I need to do three tests. Let's treat this fairly. Okay, that was the last test. Right, so we're looking at these, the one with CQE enabled. So random read speed 5477, 5561 is the fastest speed. Yeah, so I'm gonna keep that one. So I need to do all the same with the ax, but unfortunately I can't. And uh, if I show this command, so we're looking for that command Q engine, you can see that it doesn't show up. And I have done all the changes to config.tech. So we go into files and boot firmware config.txt. You can see that I've enabled it here, DT param SD CQE on. And if we have a look at the forum thread, it's only if your card supports CQ that you should see this message. So the ax unfortunately won't get any faster because it doesn't support CQ. So what about some different cards? Well, let's try the Samsung Pro first. So if we open up terminal and pop that command in, you can see that it's not supported. That's a shame. Let's try the SanDisk Extreme Pro. So let's run that command again. Yes, so Command Q Engine is enabled. So that means that it's worth doing another speed test because it will be faster than when I last tested it. So let's open Diagnostics. And I'll do three tests just like I've been doing all along. This is up to date with all of the cards that I've tested with this new method. So let's run tests. Okay, let's show log. Yeah, now we're talking 69,240 sequential write speed, which is way quicker than anything else here. Random write speed, 1818. Well, that's not as good as the Raspberry Pi card. Bearing in mind, this isn't a new card, but I wouldn't say I've used it loads, but random read speed, really nice, 5,993. And it does show that the, the official Raspberry Pi card with CQE enabled is actually a very good card. So as always, I'm gonna do three tests. 
So best random read speed was 5993, which was the first one. See, the sequential write speed went up a bit in the middle one there, but pretty consistent. So let's keep that top one and delete those two. So we need to put the official Raspberry Pi card down here to keep all the CQE cards together. So sequential write speed was a lot better on the SanDisk at 69,000 compared to 29,000, but I don't think that matters that much for an OS. Uh, the random write speed is faster on the official Raspberry Pi card, but the random read speed was the best on the SanDisk Extreme Pro. So as long as your card supports it, you get a free, quite major turbo boost. That difference on the official Raspberry Pi card was really good. So it definitely sped up a lot. I'll put links in the description to all the cards that I've tested. So really good news, if your card supports it, you get a free boost in performance on a Pi 5 at least. But let's not rule out these other cards. The Axe was very cheap, and so if you're buying it for an older Raspberry Pi, then actually it would be perfectly suitable for that. And in fact, it was on the standard setting, it was actually faster than the official Raspberry Pi card. But for a Pi 5 with CQE enabled, then look for the cards that support it. Shame about the Samsung Pro. Yeah, really interesting results. So great work by everybody at Raspberry Pi Towers. Thanks for watching. Hope all this helps.